they're not worried about going back to Hollywood and having a producer call them and say, oh, we're sorry you lost a job. Whereas that's a very real fear for Christians and conservatives in Hollywood. Uh, there, it, that's one of the major reasons that uh, Christians and conservatives are so rare in Hollywood is that they are afraid of losing these jobs. And so I think that uh, I think that uh, if anyone can be called brave for uh, for giving a sp for getting on a stage and really telling what they believe, it's it's someone like Chris Pratt. It's not someone like Meryl Streep. You know, we see these award shows recently and you've got all these celebrities that come up and they just bash the president, they bash the presidency, drop an F-bombs and it was just so refreshing when I saw Chris Pratt who I really like. I do too. And he talked about God, his faith and how it's okay. I like him before but now I love him. Praying. Let's listen. Number one, breathe. If you don't you'll suffocate. Number two, you have a soul. Be careful with it. God is real. God loves you. Learn to pray. It's easy and it's so good for your soul. People are going to tell you you're perfect just the way you are. You're not. You are imperfect. There is a powerful force that designed you that way. And if you're willing to accept that, you will have grace. And grace is a gift. And like the freedom that we enjoy in this country, that grace was paid for with somebody else's blood. Do not forget it. Number four, when giving a dog medicine, put the medicine in a little piece of hamburger, they won't even know they're eating medicine. <laughs> very deep. Very, very deep. He wrapped it all up by saying, hey, nobody is perfect. People are going to tell you you're perfect just the way you are. But you're not. <laughs> However, if you are willing to accept that, you have grace, and grace is a gift. Yeah, yeah, wrapped in the fun of you. Because what Chris Pratt did, he's actually risking consequences because there is so much backlash, like you said, against not only political mm -hmm. conservatives, but against Christianity, against preaching the gospel. I mean, there's really no two ways about it. What he did yeah. up there was he preached the gospel. He said someone else, Jesus Christ, died for your sins, and by the grace of God, yeah. you can be saved. He talked about having a soul. He talked about learning how to pray. I mean, like I said, my jaw just dropped when I saw this. Uh, and, and I guess it, it, it's a shocking question. I never thought I'd be asking this on my show, but is there hope for Hollywood? You know, there very, there very well may be. I mean, it, it all depends on people like Chris Pratt flocking to Hollywood and doing more because what he said is such a valuable message in our society today, especially the part where he said, uh, you know, where he said, uh, like, you are, not, you are not perfect because the message of our culture is today is this message of self-acceptance. Like, you need to accept accept your flaws, accept yourself the way you are. He says, no, you are not perfect. You do have flaws that you need to work on. And, and that's such a valuable message because that's not what people are being told in our culture today. When I first came, I had on the surface something that seemed to be like the perfect life or a pretty good life. Alison Mack, uh, the story that involving her. That's right. She has been charged with sex trafficking for her alleged role in that self-help group. Take my hand. She's the actress best known for playing a young Superman's best friend on Smallville. I can explain later. I did what I had to do. But this morning, Allison Mack is due in court, facing sex trafficking charges after being accused of involvement in helping to recruit women as alleged sex slaves for a secret sorority within an organization called Nexium, based out of Albany, New York. It breaks you down. It locks in a new identity, like a cult persona is what I've been told. And then it makes you submissive and suggestible. So the end result is you have women agreeing to do things like to hurt themselves. Keith Ranieri, the leader of Nexium, is facing charges including sex trafficking and forced labor conspiracy related to that secret sorority. Ranieri and Mac seen together in this video. So one would say authenticity is being as you are and expressing as you are. I don't know why that makes me want to cry. It's beautiful. What do you remember about her personality? Was she captivating? Oh, absolutely. It was energy like that wanted to pull you in. She pitched that Parker would be perfect to join a local organization she was involved in, connecting with women, developing leadership skills, going on retreats. 
And she never alluded to the fact that there was anything other than motivational. But prosecutors believe there's much more to that so-called women's empowerment group, saying Mac, a Smallville actress, was second in command to Keith Raniere, the Superman in what many believe is a sex cult where women are brainwashed and branded in upstate New York. And branded with the symbol incorporating Raniere's initials without any anesthesia. It was a horror movie. It was the most inhumane, horrific way to treat anybody. The 35-year-old actress was expressionless and silent, leaving the latest court hearing Friday connected to the sex trafficking charges she faces. Still, she can't help but wonder, what if? At first, I'm like, I could never be a victim of this. There's no way. But knowing what I know now, who knows what, what could have happened? Who knows where, where I could be right now? Parker says she does wonder to what extent Mac herself may have been brainwashed in all this. I think there absolutely is hope for Hollywood, but it, but it requires people like Pratt to, to uh, speak out and speak out more because his message is still really rare. Like you said, our jaws dropped when he says this sort of thing. And we want to live in a country where, where that's just the norm, where, where people that we look, look up to and people that we see on TV, people we see in movies are, are just uh, good people, you know? And, and, and that's really not true right now. And you see that with the Me Too movement, absolutely. Like uh, uh, just in Hollywood, it's, it's really being revealed as this den of depravity and like the freedom that we enjoy in this country, that grace was paid for with somebody else's blood, do not forget it. Those are just some of his nine rules for life. You know, we're in commencement season. Yeah. That's, that's so, stuff to live by right there. So good. And he I went love on, that people were cheering. Yeah. Too. That's what we need to hear more of. He went on to say, earn it. He said, reach out to someone in pain, be strong, be humble, and do not bully other people. Mm -hmm. Really, really great touching speech. So he's a guy that was on Parks and Recreation, was kind of fat, and they said he wanted to get a job on Moneyball. So they go, you're too fat to play this pitcher. So he lost about 40 pounds, became a workout maven. And he also uh, was took fifth place in the state wrestling championship. And his coach said, what do you want to do when you graduate? He says, I don't know, but I'm going to be famous. I'm going to make a blank ton of money. <laughs> I think he's way on, uh, well on his way. I think he earned it, right? Along the way, he developed those uh, nine points, and they're good ones. Thank what you a good example. Yeah, he's okay. married to Anna Ferris. They just went through a divorce, and um, it was amicable. They said that they were going to raise their son. His name's Jack, and he mentioned Jack in the speech and said, one day you're going to hear this son. Thanked his parents, said, we didn't have any money growing up, but we laughed a lot, and we still do. That is a great example for future celebrities and mm -hmm. their speeches. Just super refreshing to hear someone, because typically when we hear, oh, we're going to talk about uh, a celebrity accepting an award. It's like, oh, that means Meryl Streep or, or Robert De Niro got on the stage and cussed out Trump for, for 15 minutes, you know? And then and then the next day, everyone's like, oh, they're so brave for getting on that stage and 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 doing that. It's like, that's not brave. That's They're not, they're, they're just stating what everyone already thinks, you know? And so people like Chris Pratt can fight against that. And I think, I think there's, a, there's an argument to be made that that battle is being won right now. It does mean elder. I'll take that. I'll own that. I think there's not enough people who own the idea that they're an elder. And we don't, you know, young people in this generation don't have many people to look up to because everyone's pretending that they're 22 years old when they're not. So I'm, I'm happily a 38-year-old generation award-winning man who's uh, happy and eager to share everything I know about being a great, probably the greatest person. No, I don't know. I'm just having fun. Hey, man, it's me, and I'm fine. Kinda. I had a heart attack, a massive heart attack, and very nearly died uh, the other night, Sunday night. Healthcare for actor director Kevin Smith prompted fellow actor Chris Pratt to offer him these well wishes on Twitter. Kevin, we don't know each other too good, but I have loved you since Clerks, and I'm praying for, I, for your cause because I believe in the healing power of prayer. Can you please pray with me, people? Well, apparently some on social media were just appalled by that, writing things like this. Great, now I won't enjoy your films as much knowing you're a Jesus nut. It, it's kind of incredible. You know, I mean, Twitter unfortunately gives people, <laughs> all the way from the beginning, from the top down, a lot of desire, a lot of independence to say what they think, but some of it's just downright mean.
Yeah, I agree. And you know, Martha, this was a fascinating conversation to see play out on social media over the last couple days. And the different ways that people grieve, that people react, that people want to extend or express goodwill or good wishes. But I think we're forgetting that there are a lot of people in this country when they say you're in my thoughts and prayers, they really mean it. You know, you look at somebody like Chris Pratt. Faith is a big part of his life. He's been vocal about it on yeah. social media before in interviews. And Kevin Smith even agreed, hey, we shouldn't be fighting over this. I appreciate all the prayers. I want all the help and prayers that I can get. Uh, so I, I think we got to remember that when somebody says, I'm praying for you, they, they really may be doing it. And faith is an important part of their life. And that's yeah. their way of taking action. And, and there's also just manners and respect for people. And, you know, just stay out of it. Just let, let him say what he wants to say with regard to this. And, you know, people don't need to have these snide, awful comments uh, chiming in. It's just a, a bad environment uh, in that regard. God is real. <laughs> God loves you. God wants the best for you. Believe that. I do. Learn to pray. It's easy and it's so good for your soul. There is a powerful force that designed you. And if you're willing to accept that, you will have grace. That grace was paid for with somebody else's blood. Do not forget it.